morning and happy Sabbath everyone. Yeah. It's good to be here at the first Sabbath in the year 20, how much? 22. 22. Last year when I came, last Wednesday, that was this past Wednesday I was here. By the way, <laughs> we miss you when you are not here on Wednesday. Yes. Or better said Thursday. Because when the sun goes down, the new day starts. Are you aware of that? Yes. Now that could be a trick that some people can work on you to cause you not to keep the Sabbath holy. <coughs> when did the Sabbath begin? Uh huh. Friday, 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 Sunset. Friday, Sunset. What day was that? No, it started when the weeks end. When the weeks begin. <laughs> I want you to remember the Sabbath ends when? The weeks. Yes. And begin when? As the week. You don't know? As the week. When As the week. does it begin? It begins of Friday sunset. Friday sunset? Yes. And it ends when? It on Saturday sunset. When is that? Saturday Sunday evening. Oh, Sunday evening. It can't be Sunday evening. It must be nice. You gotta be. You see, this, this, this is not the message. Sunday morning. Please be aware that we are going to have to give account to God for disobeying His prescribed law. Amen. The Sabbath is a part of the fourth commandment. Amen. Amen. You understand that? Yes. We must understand that. As our probation is being closed, all of these things are taken into, in, taken into account. Amen? Our Sabbath observance. Sabbath is a happy day, the children used to say back home. And we were going to church on the Sabbath day. Now everybody is called in to stay home because there's fire in the bush. I'm, I'm serious. Today, my intent is to look at the altar of sacrifice. How many of you have seen an altar of sacrifice? Hmm? Can I see your hands? I saw one. Huh? Pictures. Pictures. What did you say? Why did you see it? You ever saw one? Yeah. How it looks. Oh, just like the pictures. I just remember I was driving on the Easter Parkway and mm. I saw the Jews. You saw one. Having a lamb mm -hmm. burn. I couldn't stop, but I was peeping, yeah. I you saw one? Yeah. You sure it's one you saw, right? Well, it was being so we missed a lesson. <laughs> yeah. We missed a what? Lesson. lesson. We are to be. Sacrificial emblems. Okay. Hello? You going? Yeah. <laughs> that just came. Nothing, any notes. <coughs> but in order for all for God to bless us, we have to begin to look like Him in, in some, some form. Yeah. Yeah. Let us pray. Our gracious most loving Heavenly Father. Help us. Help us, Lord, in these last days of Earth's history to walk closest to you so that we will not lose our focus on the who we are looking for and not think it's us we are looking for. And help us to know that probation's days and nights are closing down. And we must make our calling and election final and sure. Bless us in this regard. Each home, each boy, each girl, each man, each daughter, each family. Bless us today. And thank you, Lord, for bringing us out here. So be with us as we seek to be engaged in this communion service experience today as we open this new year in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Yes. 
Amen. 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 All right. I didn't ask for any pictures because I want a head. Do you want to give a picture? I didn't, I didn't ask for one. I want you to use your own head. You say what? Head. Have you ever seen an altar sacrifice? What it looked like? No? Except for the pictures. Okay. <coughs> In the courtyard of the earthly sanctuary are two articles. How many articles? Two. One is called the altar of burnt offering. And the other is called what? The laver, not the lava. The laver, lava, okay, all of that same thing. Don't you get the point? And these two furnishings, furnitures, are to represent whom? Christ. The communion service message today will look at that in a while. I'm trying not to belong. The altar was positioned between the sanctuary building and the gate. So as you enter the courtyard, I'm going to go right there. The first thing you see is the gate on going in. Then you see the altar on the left hand side or close to the center based on who built it in present day. And so God's design is for us to look at the altar, decide who went there last and then fix yourself to go. I have no questions on that. In the courtyard, there I said before, there were two articles. We have the lever, which is one, and it's just before the entering of the door into the holy place. And then you have the altar. All right? You have the burnt offering to be placed on the altar, which is the altar of sacrifice. That burnt offering reminds us of the death of the one who died for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. The altar, she says, was positioned between the sanctuary building and the gate. But it was nearer to the gate, according to Exodus 40, verses 6 and 7. And it says, And thou shalt set the altar of this burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation, and thou shalt set the labor between the tent of the congregation and the altar. And I'm not fixated on that. I'm fixated on the issue of worship. Of what? Worship. When we come or go to the house of worship on a Sabbath, we are not going to worship human beings. We are going to worship God. But most of the times, I'm talking about those I know. I know Adventists. I don't know anybody else but Adventists. Maybe some Baptists. Most of the times, we go to worship people. That has to stop. What did I say? That has to stop. If we are expecting to go to heaven, we cannot worship people. I don't care who he looks like, or who she looks like, or what we think about him or her. We cannot worship people. That is why this is here. To remind us as to who is our sacrifice? Are you getting it? This is our sacrifice. This is exemplary, exemplary because we have the bread and we have the wine. That, that, that epitomizes who we are to be, to be like. The one who has been crucified already. I'm not being crucified. And I don't mean, in, I don't mean spiritual, I mean I wasn't kneeled upon a cross. Neither of us. But we are nailed upon a cross spiritually. 
as we grow in Christ. So could you imagine growing in Christ causing you to be nailed upon a cross? I've never been to a funeral service and see people laughing. They're all very somber or maybe shedding tears because someone significant in their life just died. Just died. When we see Christ on the cross, are we laughing? No. We want to know, how can I live differently going forward after this? Amen. So how can I live differently after including myself in this today? How can I be different in my living? I want to rush to something. We are to be mothers. To be what? Mothers. Mothers of Christ. Christ. To whom? The world. the world. Starting in our own homes. Mothers. What's a mother? Uh, a display of what? Talk to me. Whoever you believe. Whoever you believe. A display of land which is to be emulated. A replica of In the book, The Path to the Throne, Sarah Peck writes. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now this rest comes from the altar of Jesus. <clears throat> Come now, let us reason together. I was listening a while ago to... The elder was talking a while ago, not this Jeremiah, about what we need to do for Jesus. She says here, this is, a clear, this is Jesus' altar. Him that cometh to me, Jesus is saying, I will in no wise cast out. This is just January the 1st. January the 1st? This is January 1st? January 1st requires us to walk closest with Jesus this year. I'm not preaching it, I'm just talking. Walk closest with Jesus this year because probation is speedily closing. On whom? On us as individuals. This is not the church, no, this is us as individuals. One on one. What if I don't show up next week. And thenceforth, never anymore. What if? What if you don't show up tomorrow? And thenceforth, forever. Until he comes. Who is to blame? For the shortfall. Or the not knowing. Or not practicing God-likeness. Not God, it is God-likeness. Like God. Who is to determine that? When our walk is, we say, spasmodically good. Once in a little while. Yeah. Emil Andreasen says, All sinners can come at the same time because there is sufficient room for all. A man said that. He says, All sinners can come to the cross at the same time. There is no full group. The more come, the more can come. Because the altar is not watching me in its face. The altar is watching me from somewhere else. All sinners can come at the same time and be saved. This altar had to accommodate large groups of people from all across the globe at the same time. They asked me, so why are you talking about the altar of sacrifice and this is communion? Because it is for people who got another chance. 
Did you get that? People who got another chance to do it better next time. To walk closest next time. To plan for this year, to live, to, to, to be like Christ this time, not just next time. Starting now. Those of us that have made, made the choice to walk closest to Christ this time, God bless you. God bless you. The Bible doesn't explain all about the sanctuary. Can I say that again? The Bible does not explain all about the sanctuary. You know why? Because you have to grow in it. You have to go through the experience for yourself and learn what it means in your own life for yourself. That's not written in the book. That comes as you grow. So the more you know, the faster you will want to grow. And growing is not in a book. Growing in knowledge is not in a book. It is in Jesus. The wood with which the altar was made was to receive the burnt offering placed upon the altar. If the altar remained as it was constructed, then it would be surely overlaid with brass. In other words, like I keep telling people, Jesus looks for models he can use. Looks for what? Models he can use. He cannot use everything that shows up. So models could be that image across there. Could be a human being. Models. Dressed in that garb. And the, the aim of that person is supposed to show what each aspect of my life represents or believes in or wants to share to you. In the same manner also, we are to offer our lives to Jesus as a living sacrifice. If you've got a chance to live for Jesus, what would you do that you did that you haven't done before? Don't tell me. I don't want to know. If you get a chance to live for Jesus, what would you do that you haven't done before? And is that new thing requested or required by God? Just as I am. You know something? The song is not just to sing, it is to run over in your head, just as I am. So you don't have to take a bath to be saved. Otherwise the prodigal son would have had to have a bath first. You don't have to take any special medication to be saved. Let's go to Jesus and be saved. You can stay home and be saved. You can walk on the street and be saved. The song says, safe in the arms of Jesus. Long before the sanctuary was built, the altar was used as a place of worship. So there's the altar before the sanctuary. The altar came first. Sanctuary came after in terms of information materials. People always worshipped. You were born with a design for worship. In your mind, let me worship something. So that's why the young guys worship the cars. Don't find them. They worship in something. When they understand it's not the car, it's the Christ, then they will change. Same see, but different thing. Car and Christ. Crash for car. 
What else if I don't know? I am hoping that our plan in for the next year will not be to be here, sit down. But we'll be all over the place spreading the message. Amen. All of us. Amen. Including me. I ain't trying to give responsibility. I am going to take it also. Not that I, I have been taking it. <clears throat> Yesterday I got a call from a lady and I don't know the woman. Her father happened to know me and the father lives in Florida. And she wants to bring her child here to get blessed. I said, okay, when you will let me know. She called me in a long, this long talk. And I said, okay. When you come back, just check me out. We'll work on that. Another one <coughs> that doesn't live far from where we worship here now. The two of them. They will start coming here. They're not members of the church. I don't care about that. They will come. Amen? Yeah. And when they come, they will be asking, is he here? Yes, I'll be right here when they come. You know why? We will put there for that. Yeah. What a mighty God we serve. He's able. He's able. You see, you see, you see, this is a witness center. But it's not the witness. We are the witnesses. Not this place. Just this morning I was coming up with Sister Sister Keisha. I said, yeah, that's, and I told her, I said, not too far from where we're turning off, I have some friends. And they're not Adventists. They're not Catholics, but they're people. <laughs> I walk up to a guy on the street. I walk in. I am a walker. Hey, that's my new name. And I, I ask him, I said, do you, do you have a family? Just so you know, do you have a family? Say yes. And I, what's the name? Hey, give me the name. I said, listen, um, do you have family everywhere? He said, nah, nah. And I watch him and I laugh. I had a big laugh. I said, you know, truly there's only one family, you know. I said, what's your name? Tall guy. And I said, that's not your name. Mm. Your name is human. <laughs> I said, all of us are family members. Mm -hmm. All of us! Sister, brother, sister, 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 brother. No, 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 sorry. Brother. <laughs> there's only one family. It's called human. <clears throat> Call what? Human. Human. That's a family. So we are all family. Oh, you didn't know that? I won't explain anything else about that because you will think you will think about something. I would not explain about that. You asked a lot what he meant about just putting us here as one family. One family. Because Christ made one man and one woman. And we all came from them. So we are either uncles, aunties, brothers, sisters, auntie, grammy. We came from them. And, and all the complexion came from Adam and Eve. Hello, somebody! Adam didn't make it. It came to them. So this service that we are having here is not just about us, you know. It's about God reminding us as to whose we are. Whose we are? It's right here on the table. Amen. Belong to Jesus. Yes. Abraham was tested before and he failed. God was about to meet him, to test him again, to see if he would trust him. And this time, now God used Isaac to test the faith of his father. As shown in Genesis 22. And Isaac spake to Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for the good offering? Abraham's faith was severely tested then and caused him to give a following response to his son and said, 
my son, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. God doesn't bring us without any solution. He has every solution for every request we will make to him. God is here. What is your request? Don't tell me. What is your request from God today for you? For you. Yes, he died for us. For our salvific memorial right here, right here. But what is our request from him today? What do you want him to do for you today, tomorrow, next day? What it is. And you know, faith without works is dead. We have to trust God for what he says. Ask and ye shall what? receive. Knock and it shall be open. For everyone that ask it, receive it. I didn't say that. We just read that. For everyone that asks receives. Because God says that. Don't let nobody fool and tell you that. Make up your own story. God says, come unto me. All ye that labor and the heavenly and I will give you rest. He said that. This is, nature. This is God saying that. To whom? To the, to the student. We are all the children. You, didn't know that? you think it was, we are not Pentecostals, we are Pente, Pentecostal. <laughs> Are you Baptist? I was, I was baptized. I said, you're Baptist, you're Baptist. They told me that. You're baptized? I said, yes. He said, well, you're Baptist. I said, okay. I can go with that. The coming of Jesus' name. Yes. And people like me will have to sit by and look to see what God is doing with people like us. When you get to my age, you're either you're happy or you're sad. Hmm. Hmm. One of the two. Hmm. Hmm. I'm not sad. I know that. You know why? I don't have any dead people in my family. All those who are dead are not my family. <laughs> <laughs> all of my family members are alive. Amen. And you all are my family members. Amen. Amen. So if they're dead, they're gone home. My wish for us today is a closer walk with God. Amen. Oh, for a closer walk with God, a kind of heavenly fear. That's what we need, you know. We need a closer walk. Anybody find a number? Uh, 580, sorry, 383. 383. <laughs> let's, let's just sing one stanza. <coughs> 383 in the old. You know, that's what we need, you know. We need a closer walk with God. All of us. And that includes me. Oh, for a closer walk with God, a long and heavenly friend, a light to shine.
before we continue, my brothers and sisters in the faith, I am going to ask you to make a decision today, not to come up here, to walk with Christ for the rest of your life. Amen. Do I knock? Amen. Do I knock? Just walk with Christ for the rest of your life. Amen. Amen. Is that is that a rough thing to do? No. Walk with Christ. Amen. Next one. What peaceful? What peaceful? down. 